Alleluia. 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 Give it all honor and praise, respect, glory, and allegiance to our God and our King. The Holy One, the only one in Israel. We all must say hallelujah. hallelujah. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. How y'all feel, brothers and sisters? How y'all feeling, brothers and sisters? Y'all not going to fall asleep on me. I could guarantee you that. Ain't nobody going to sleep on me today. Brothers and sisters, this God is amazing. Our God is King. The one who said, let there be light, and there was light. The one who woke you up this morning and caused you to get here safe. The one who gave you some food to eat and a place to sleep and some warmth and some hot water and all the things that you need. And you got some perfume on, right? You got some oils on. Got to smell good before you come before the most high. You got to look good, brothers and sisters. Your hands is clean. Your, your, everything is looking sharp. The most high God is good, brothers and sisters. Don't take your blessings for granted. I thank the most high God for this opportunity and for this privilege to say, Todah Yehoah. Thank the most high God for the time he gave my father, Cohen Levy. I thank the most high God for my Ima who's here, for Emi who's home watching. I thank the most high God for my Nashim and my children. For all your lives, I thank the most high God for all things and for everything. I thank the most high God for protection. Okay. Brothers and sisters, the most high God guides me and shields me. If you don't know what I do, ask me later. But I have a dangerous job. And the most high God makes sure that I miss all the good action. I miss all the good stuff. And that might be good to y'all, but sometimes I want some action. But my Ema be praying for me. And my family pray for me. So sometimes I miss all the good stuff. I be wanting to see some stuff. But God be like, no, you're going to go this way. The last, the other day I was like, oh, I'm going to get something to eat. Went go got something to eat. I came back, the whole place is empty. So what happened? Man, I should turn my radio on. Listen to the radio. Oh, there's a big thing going on. And I missed it. I'm going to get something to eat. Oh, man, I missed that one too. But God watches over me. Even when you don't know it, God is watching over you. God take, take, makes you miss that train, catch the next train, and you think, oh, I'm going to be late. You better be careful. God is protecting you from something. Oh, this traffic. Oh, you road rage crazy ones. Y'all know who y'all are. Come on, get out the way. Ah! God might be saving you from something. Got to be careful. You miss that train? You know what? Say a prayer. Maybe y'all is protecting you from something. Now, don't be late every day. I'm not giving you an excuse to keep being late, all right? Stop being late. Get to work on time. Get to school on time. But sometimes, Yah is protecting you from something. Sometimes the Most High God is sending you a different way because you're not supposed to see that thing or be into that or whatever it is, the Most High God, He protects us. He protects us. That's what you pray for, for that protection. And the Most High God puts that shield around you, and you don't even know it. I thank the Most High God for all things and for everything. Brothers and sisters, we're going to get into this portion. The portion is called Sal, as my brother Amos just spoke about. It means to command, command. And as he spoke about it, I'm going to speak a little, about, a little bit about this word command. You know, this portion, I just got it this week. I wasn't supposed to do the portion. But I got it this week, and I said, first of all, I tried to pass it off. I said, I don't want to do this portion. So I said, nah, I'm going to pass it off. I said, I'm going to pass it to Ooz. And Uz was like, well, I got next week. I don't want to do two weeks in a row. I said, well, I got the afternoon next week. So we all bargaining trying to get out of it. And I said, you know what? I got it. Because maybe the Most High God is putting something in me today. And I pray that he has some words for me and for you that needs to be said. So this word command, right? It's only talking about this portion. It's talking about burnt offerings and sacrifices. And you sitting there like, we don't do burnt offerings. We're not doing that right now. But guess what? If we focus on the things that we can't do, we're missing the point. Let's focus on the things that we can do. So this word command, some of the things that we're not doing that we should be doing, like the commandments, we need to figure out a way that we do these things all the time. Some of the things that we're missing out on, I'll give you some examples. For instance, wearing our fringes every day. That's a command. That's something that we should be doing. But let's have open dialogue about it. Why don't we wear our fringes every day? Are we scared? Are we nervous? Do you want some, you think someone's going to come up to you and ask you, what are those funny looking tassels on your clothes? Are you afraid to give a good answer, a good response? We got to figure out these different things. How are we going to connect to the people that are out there watching you? There's people watching you that you don't even realize it. They see that you leave every Friday a little early. A little early, trying to get out the door. I got to go. Shabbat coming in. Like, what is this Shabbat that they keep talking about? Maybe I want to get to Shabbat. 
But they don't know that Shabbat been coming to us for years. We don't go to Shabbat. Shabbat come to us. So he's saying that. They, you think they're not watching, but they watch you. Why are they always leaving on so Friday so early? Telling the, the, the boss man that they got something important to do. But every Friday, you're sitting there like, dang, I got to get one of those gigs to tell them something so I can leave work early too. But that's something that we need to think about. The Shabbat, that's another one. Some people do Shabbat when they feel like it. Shabbat is a command, brothers and sisters. That's something that we're supposed to keep every single week. Shabbat after Shabbat. This day is holy before the creator. And it'll save your life. Most of the drama happens Friday night. And that's a fact. Look it up. Statistics. Most craziness happens. It happens on a Friday night. Most car accidents happen on Saturday mornings, they say. Brothers and sisters, there's things that we should be doing that we could be doing that we're missing out on. Here's another one for you. The command. To eat clean. Woo. Nobody want to hear that one. Eat clean. Look, I'm a, I got a surprise for y'all. I'm going to look up something for y'all. I'm not going to tell y'all what it is until after I look it up. All right? It's one of y'all famous places that y'all love to eat at. Right? Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's, get, let's talk turkey now. Let's talk some turkey now, huh? So I'm going to look up a menu of a famous place that everybody likes to eat. They love it. They tell me they love it. They say it got the best chicken in the world. Who said it? Chick-fil-A, right? They love Chick-fil-A. Well, let me read you a little bit of Chick-fil-A's menu. Here we go. Y'all ready? Y'all ready, right? We're going to look up the, because uh, the, I'm going to look up the breakfast menu. Because everybody skipped the breakfast menu. Hold on now. Hold on now. Let's look it up. Let's look it up. Here we go. Y'all ready? I hate to do this to y'all. Let's start off. Chick-fil-A biscuit. Chicken biscuit. Nothing wrong with chicken and a biscuit. Spicy chicken biscuit. Chick-fil-A chicken minis. Egg white grill. Hash brown scrambled burrito. Hash brown scrambled bowl. Chicken, egg, and cheese biscuit. Uh-oh. Bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. So, yes, they do sell swine in there. But this is the best one right here. The sauces, egg, and cheese biscuit. And for this one, I'm going to let the reader read the ingredients there. Here, read this ingredient, almost. Read that right there, that ingredient. Put some spice on that. <laughs> read exactly what it say. A tasty pork sausage. Whoa! Patty. Hold on. Come on, Amos. I ain't make this up. Say it again. A what? A tasty <laughs> pork sausage patty along with a folded egg and cheese. Give me that bowl. I ain't making this up. Chick-fil-A, a tasty pork sandwich. We ain't supposed to be eating in these types of places. And I know this says Chick-fil-A and they only sell chicken. They only sell chicken. I ain't never seen no pork. I ain't never seen it. What it said? A tasty, come on, say it with me. A tasty Pork sandwich. <laughs> and next week, Chief Uziel is going to go more deep into the dietary law. But these are things we're not supposed to be doing. This is that command that I'm talking about. Sal, command. Although there's many things that we can't do, there's so many things that we can do and that we have to stay away from that'll make us better. It's not for us. Like he said, God don't, God don't care about that. Matter of fact, go to 1 Samuel before we start. 1 Samuel 15. Start from the 22nd verse. 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter, and the 22nd verse. Y'all with me still, right? I, I ain't make y'all too mad with the Chick-fil-A, right? All right, what about my people online? Y'all mad at me yet or nah? <laughs> All right. <laughs> 1 Samuel 15, verse 22, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Samuel said, 
Hath Jehovah as great delight in burnt offerings and, and sacrifices, sacrifices as in hearkening to the voice of Jehovah? Come on. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Say what? And to hearken than the fat of rams. Say that again. To obey? To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Listen, these sacrifices that we're about to read about, the laws of the Most High God is more important than to be sacrificing. Guards don't need all of that stuff. We do that for, he did that for us. So that when you make a mistake, you got a guilt offering. You make a mistake, you got the sin offering. You got your peace offering. You got your meal offering. You got your burnt sacrifices. All that stuff is just so God could give us something that we could get closer to him with. But God don't need that. God wants our obedience. He wants us to obey what he said. Oh, God, I just gave you this big sacrifice, but I break Shabbat every week. You think that's going to work? God, I, 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 I just gave you this great sacrifice, but I don't wear my fringes. These, the commandments are important. Go to Psalms 50 real quick. Psalms 50. Take it from verse 7. Psalms 50, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. Uh -huh. O Israel, and I will testify against thee. Jehovah thy God, am I, I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices. Right. And thy burnt offerings are, are continually, continually before, before me. I will take no bullock out, out of thy, thy house, house, nor he goats out of thy folds. Right. For every breast of the forest is mine. No, nope. for every beast. Every beast of the forest is God. mine. And the cattle upon a thousand hills, I know all the fowls of the mountain, uh -huh. and the wild beasts of the field are mine. Right. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. Right. For the world is mine. And the fullness thereof. Do I eat the flesh of bulls? No. Or drink the blood of goats? No. Offer unto Jehovah the sacrifice of thanksgiving, thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Amen. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt honor That's me. That's what it's about. Call upon God when you need him. The sacrifices and the meal offerings, they're not found in our hands. We need God's mercy. That's what we need. So in order to get Yah's mercy, we got to do what Yah said. So when Yah say, keep my laws, commandments, and statutes, Keep the Shabbat. Wear your fringes. Eat clean. And do the things that you can do. That's how you're going to get the blessings from the creator. Let's get into this portion, brothers and sisters. The portion is called Sal. It means to command. I'm going to run through it really quick. But I just wanted us to understand. Although you're talking about a command and although you read this burnt office and sacrifice and you're like, what do I get out of this? What do I get out of this? Think about what you can do before God. Don't worry about the things that. Think about the things that you're not doing that you could be doing. That you could be doing better. That we all could be doing better. It's not about just you or me or I'm pointing the finger. I'm talking about all of us. We all could check out a menu before we sit down. You sit there and be like, oh man, the Muslims, they eat like us. They clean. But then they don't. They eat kingfish and they eat shrimp. They eat all the things that's not that we're not supposed to be eating. So don't just say, oh yeah, they clean. They halal. Do you know what halal really means? Halal means that they praying over it in the name of their God. So we got to be careful with all of that stuff. So let's get into this portion, brothers and sisters. Leviticus chapter 6. Anything else we could think about that we could be doing better? That we could be doing in this country, in this land of captivity? What else can we be doing? Bonding more with each other. We can be bonding more with each other. That's what the sister said. Brothers and sisters, we only see each other on Shabbat. You know why? I can tell you why. Because we don't trust each other. We don't trust each other. I don't know if I want you in my body. <laughs> that's what it come down to. I don't know if I want you in my house. But that's how you get closer to each other. You get to learn people. You get to know and understand, brothers and sisters. Listen, we're not all going to get along with everything and everybody. That's not reality. Sometimes me and my brothers fuss and fight. Sometimes me and my sisters fuss and fight. Sometimes we just, me and Ooze, y'all see us here together, me and Ooze be arguing half the week. <laughs> half the week. But that's my brother. But we got to argue sometimes. That's how you, yo, man, nah, man, you wrong. Nah, man, nah, man, nah, man. It's just a bunch of nah, man's going back and forth. But you need to get that sometimes. Because guess what? I'd rather me nah man you to your face than you be talking about me behind my back. That's what I'd rather. Let's talk about it. 
Why you think my keepers look stupid? Let's talk. <laughs> no, let's be real with each other. You know what I mean? Let's talk something. Yo, you got to talk stuff out sometimes. Yo, 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 let me, let's go around the corner. Let me talk to you for a minute. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It don't always got to lead to this. That's right. it, matter of fact, it shouldn't even lead to this. Right. We should be able to talk about it. Yo, man, listen, let me tell you something. Moses, they tried to kill him. At the end of that, he prayed for them. Are you better than Moses? Samuel, they tried to take away his spot and discredit his prophecy and discredit the things that he said. When they asked Samuel to pray, he said what? Far be it from me that I shouldn't pray for you. I pray for anybody that asks for prayer. You know why? Because what if the Most High is looking down at me and he's using that person to come to me to pray for them and I reject them and God reject me in return? I don't want that. I need God. I need his blessings. I need his mercy. I need his love and his compassion. I don't have time to be playing these games talking about I'm not praying for that brother and that sister. They was talking bad about me. You better go and pray. Maybe you need to pray for a better spirit. Maybe you need to pray for something that they need. Maybe they need you. Maybe they came before you even though they were talking bad about you, but maybe they need you. Maybe they don't know how to express themselves. I'm not making excuses, but I'm telling you that people are in different places in different zones in their life. Sometimes you got to meet them where they at. Let's get into the portion. I could be talking all day. I say ain't nothing in this portion, right? There's plenty in this portion. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 6, starting from verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jehovah spoke unto Moshe, saying, mm -hmm. Command Aharon and his son, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is that which goeth up on his firewood upon the altar all night until the morning. Right. And the fire of the altar shall be kept burning thereby. And the priest shall put on his linen garment, uh -huh. and his linen breeches uh -huh. shall he put upon his flesh. Right. And he shall take up the ashes whereto the fire hath consumed the burnt offering on the altar, and he shall put them. He shall put them off his garments. Right. So now he said he got to put on his breeches. And I know my sisters don't want to hear this. Well, not y'all sisters, but many sisters don't want to hear this linen breeches talk. But linen breeches is pants yeah. that the priest wore. And if the priest wore pants, that made it an article of clothing for men, which means that women can't wear them. I know you don't want to hear it. I know you want to come up with things that say, well, that was the article of clothing for a man that, that went to war and the colleague of it and all this stuff. Listen, I have a whole thing from the concordance that is laminated for arguments like this. I'm ready. Bring the arguments. I can prove to you that pants were men clothing. Even in this country. When I look at my, my old pictures from my grandparents and my, my nana, I never seen my nana in pants. Every picture I see nana in, nana got on a dress or a skirt. My grandmother, every picture, a dress or a skirt. In this country, they didn't start wearing pants until like the 1950s because they went out to, war, um, to work. Pants is for men. Agree with me or not, this is one of the things that people like to get up up in the argument about. You know what happens with Israelites? We only get up in arguments about things that we want to do. Yeah. No, seriously, because you want to wear pants, so you're going to come up with an argument to wear pants. The same way you want to come up with an argument to say that you can eat in Chick-fil-A. Well, I asked the guy if he put the chicken on the other grill. And he told me, and I saw in my own two eyes. The chicken was on the other grill and the bacon was over here. We'll come up with an excuse to justify what we want to do. I can, listen, I can justify pretty much anything. I'm very good with words. I could tell my Ema something, oh, why'd you do this? Well, because I felt that when I did this wrong thing, it was because I had a reason. You could come up with different things, different reasonings to make anything right in your eyes. That's why the Most High says, the Israelites once again did that which was evil in the sight of their own eyes. Because it's not what God said. Let's read some more. Middle of verse 4. Beginning of verse 4. And he shall put off his garments. Right. And put on other garments. And carry forth the ashes without the camp into a clean place. So what I got from this was. 
when you're doing things before the most high, you got to have separate garments. You got to have a different, different clothes, different gear, different attire from when you come before the most high God. You know how you had school clothes? You had your school clothes, and if you had your school clothes when you was playing outside, you got a marker? Because that was your school clothes? And how you treated your school clothes on the first day of school? You had them on the meat towel on the bed, and you put the shirt out. And then you put the pants there. And then you put the sneakers at the bottom as if to see yourself in that gear. Like, yeah, that looks fly. Yeah, I'm good. You got to have that for Shabbat too. Make sure your clothes are nicely pressed, nice and ironed. And you know what you're wearing, not just yesterday. You know what you were, I know what I'm wearing next Shabbat. I can tell you, I'm, I know what I'm wearing next Shabbat because I'm preparing to come before God. And I want to make sure I look fly. I want to make sure I look, it's not about y'all. I don't care how y'all think I look. I think I look good before God. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to impress God because I want God to bless me. I don't want to impress y'all. Y'all ain't y'all going to either think about me the way y'all going to think about me regardless of what I'm wearing. If I wore a crown to the top of the ceiling, they're going to be like, here he go again. <laughs> right? They're going to be like, he always doing too much. But guess what? If God like it, and I think God like it, then that's what I'm a rock. Because I want to look good. I want to put my oil on. I got to douse myself in oil. Not too much, but I want to walk by and be like, mm. and people are like, Ooh, is that him? Is that, was that, was that him? Oh, that's nice, brother. That's what I want. I want God to have, you know, we talk about that sweet savor that God want to smell. You should be a sweet savor before God as well, you know. You don't want to be a smelly savor. You go in there and everybody be like, here come Funk Master Flex. <laughs> Funk Dr. Spock is in the building. <laughs> we don't want that. You want to smell good before God. And plus, you don't want to offend people, too. You don't want to offend people. We drum, we sweat, we get in, we... Listen, you see the drummers, they up after, phew, I, I got them on, hello, to the Beishamush. After, to clean yourself up. Because they're young men and we perspire. And sometimes you go into a room and you be like, yo, we got to open up some windows around here. But we want to look good before God, smell good before God. Let's read some more. Verse 5. And the fire upon the altar shall be kept burning thereby. It, it shall, shall not, not go, go out, out, and the priest shall kindle wood on it every, every morning. morning. And he shall lay the burnt offering in order, up, in order upon it, and shall make smoke thereon the fat of the peace of, of the peace offerings. Fire shall be kept burning upon the altar continually. Continue. It, it shall, shall not, not go, go out. out. The fire shall go on continually. It shall not go out. The fire shall be on continually. It shall not go out. Brothers and sisters, your fire shall not go out before God. Your fire is not supposed to go out before God. Things is going to happen to you. Trials and tribulations. But you can't give up. You can't give up on God. You can't give up on God's people. Moses didn't do it. Moses kept going and kept going. My father used to keep going, keep going. I used to listen to my father get these calls all night long, all day long. Going, this is happening. Going this, going that. I know my Abba wanted to be like, stop calling me. But he didn't. So who am I to keep to stop? I don't got enough time in. I'm a rookie. I can't do that. I got to keep going. I can't let the people get me down now. Sometimes Israelites are a bother. Let's, let's talk real talk. Sometimes Israelites are stressful. Sometimes they get on your nerves. But you can't give up on your people. He's sitting there like, oh, man, I'm tired of taking this brother's call. I always pick up the call. Sometimes there's a brother that texts me. <sighs> I'll be like, shalom. <laughs> How are you, brother? And it's always a silly question, but guess what? If I stop and I ignore him, what may happen? How will he take that? What if something happens to him? I don't want that on my conscience. You can't give up on your people. Sometimes you need a break. Fine, take your break. Restore yourself and get back to work. That's it. My Ema one time told me, I was like, man, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm not going back out. I'm not going back out. I can't do it no more. And she said to me, she said, so let's say you leave and you start another place. Then there's just going to be another splinter group of a splinter group of a splinter group. And ultimately, the goal is for all of us to come together. So what sense does it make? 
And I had to sit there and listen. I said, dang, she makes sense when she said that. I had to get up, get my strength and say, you know what? I got to get back out there. And I complain and I do things and I say things that, until things get right. But I can't sit back on the sideline, watch y'all, watch us do things we're not supposed to do and just say, that's what you call standing idly by the brother your brother or your sister. You sit there and you watch your brother go across the street on the store, on the shop out to the store. And we make jokes. Ah, the brother went to the store. No, stop him. He's not supposed to do that. It's not for a joke. What if God decides to say, you know what? He broke the law. But we don't stop him. But then he comes back in here. And then God says, I'm going to bring destruction on him. But all of us are in it. Who else gets penalized? We all do. You got to help your brother. You got to help your sister. Sometimes you get stressed out. Take a minute, take a break, and get back in the game. That's the athlete in me, too. I don't want to lose. You got to be willing to hear correction. That's right. Sometimes you're wrong. You can't be right 100% of the time. You can't be right all the time. I mean, sometimes I'm right, but sometimes I'm wrong. You can't be right all the time. Sometimes you got to sit back and listen. And that's why you need elders. I'm serious, man. Sometimes you need mothers and fathers that you could go to and say, E, my ah, but this is what's going on. I need some advice. Sometimes it might just be your peer. Yo, yo bro, yo, sis, I need, I need some advice. But if you give up and you give up on yourself and you give up on your family, then you're losing the battle. Let's read some more. And this is the law of the meal offering. Mm -hmm. The sons of Aharon shall, of, shall offer it, it before Yehoah in front of the altar. And he shall take up therefrom his handful of the fine flour of the meal offering right. and of the oil thereof and all the frankincense which is upon the meal offering and shall make the memorial part thereof smoke upon the altar for a sweet savor unto Yehoah. That's right. And that which is left thereof shall Aharon and his sons eat. It shall be eaten without leaven in the holy place in the court of tent of the tent of meeting, and they shall eat it. It shall not be baked with leaven. I have given it as their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most holy as the sin offering and as the guilt offering. Every male among the children of Adam may eat of it, and as a do, as a do forever throughout your generations from the offerings of Jehovah made by fire. Whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy. It talks about that bread that can't have leaven in What's that called? Huh? Come on now. Y'all know it. Come on, Malcolm. Malcolm said it wrong, low. Matzah? <laughs> is, is it a matzah? Yeah, it's a matzah. Come on, say it with some enthusiasm. Matzah. Act like say it with your chance. Come on. Ain't that what you're always telling somebody? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's matzah. Most of talking about we got to make it with this matzah. I just wanted to make sure y'all was paying attention. She talking about matzah? <laughs> Come on, man. It's a matzah. Let's read some more. And Jehovah spoke unto Moshe, saying, This is the offering of Aharon and of his sons, right. which they shall offer unto Jehovah in the day when he is anointed. The tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a meal offering perpetually, half of it in the morning, Half and half thereof in the evening. How about just a quarter in the morning, a quarter in the evening? Half and half. Do what God said to do. Mm -hmm. Don't add nothing to this, to this law. God don't like that. God wants you to do exactly what he said. And guess what? Sometimes you don't know why. And it's not for you to know. Just do what he said. Let's read some more. On a griddle it shall be made with oil. When it is soaked, thou shalt bring it in. In broken pieces shalt right. thou offer the meal offering for a sweet savor unto Jehovah. Right. And the anointed priest uh -huh. that shall be in his stead from among his sons shall offer it. It is a due forever. forever. It, sh it shall be wholly made to smoke unto Jehovah. Right. And every meal offering of the priest shall be wholly made to smoke. It, it shall, shall not be eaten. eaten. Let's read some more. And Jehovah spoke unto Moshe saying, Speak unto Aharon and to his son saying, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before Jehovah? It is most holy. The priest that of offereth it for its sin shall eat it. Mm -hmm. In a holy place that shall it, shall it be eaten. In the court of the tent of meeting, 
Whatsoever shall touch the flesh thereof shall be holy. Right. And when it's sprinkled, when there is sprinkled of the blood thereof upon any garment, thou shalt wash that whereon it was sprinkled in the holy place. So if some blood get on the, on the garment, you got to wash it. It's so simple. Brothers and sisters, when things get on your garments, you got to clean them. It's a simple task. But guess what? Sometimes we don't think about that type of stuff. We out in these streets, things, we bump into people, all types of stuff. That's why if you take uh, public transportation on the train and you, you come before the Most High as far as coming up to read and things, we tell a young man, you got to stand on the train. Why? Because you don't know who was needed on that train. So you just got to, if you live two hours away, you standing up for two hours on that train. It is, and the bus too. Because you don't know what uncleanness was on that bus or on that train seat. Or oh, listen, the trains are nasty. The trains are nasty. So you don't even know, even if you don't see something, there might be something there. So you might want to just stand up regardless. I, I uh, was on the train the other day, working, and I'm chilling or whatever, and the guy's like, they, they telling me to come over. I'm like, this is overtime, bro. Come on, man. I don't want to do no work. So I get over there, and it's a homeless person, and he just made chitain, which is urine, all over the chair. Took off his socks, put his socks in the chitain, and then started cleaning himself as if it was Mayan. So these are the things that's happening on the train. So all they did was get a bucket, an old bucket, wipe the seat off, and was like, all right, the train is ready to go. So now the next person at the next stop don't even know what they're about to sit on. So that gives you a little picture of the train station in the New York City, in New York City, the fabulous MTA <laughs> that they charge $2.90 for a one way. That's crazy. I remember, you know what's crazy when I can say I remember something? This is about to be mind blowing. I remember when the train was a dollar. Now some of y'all gonna say, well I remember when it was Oh, me. he must have said five cents. Sheesh. <laughs> I don't remember that. But I remember tokens. A dollar to go, a dollar to get back, and all of that good stuff. And now $2.90 to get one way. That is almost $6 to get somewhere and back home. That is crazy. Sheesh. Listen. Crazy, but the train station is crazy. Prepare yourself to stand. That way you don't get unclean. That way you don't sit in somebody's craziness and you don't come before the most high and be like, oh, I need po baru kasha. No, you're going to wait out this week. All right, let's read on. Verse 21. But the earthen vessel wherein it is sodden shall be broken. And if it be sodden in a brazen vessel, it shall be scoured. Scoured, scoured right. And rinsed in water. Really, really clean. Scoured like, like a scrub. Let's read. Every male amongst the priests may eat thereof. It is most holy. And no sin offering whereof any of the blood is brought into the rent to the tent of meeting to make atonement in the holy place shall be eaten. It shall be burnt, burnt with, with fire. fire. Let's read some more. Chapter 7, verse 1. And this is the law of the guilt offering. It is the most holy. In the place where they kill the burnt offering, shall they kill the guilt offering. And the blood thereof shall be dashed against the altar round about. And he shall offer of it all the fat thereof, the fat tail and the fat that covereth the inwards, and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the loins and the lobe above the liver, which he shall take away by the kidneys. And the priest shall make then smoke upon the altar for an offering made by fire unto Jehovah. It is a guilt offering. Mm -hmm. Every male among the priests may eat thereof. It shall be eaten in the holy place. It is most holy. So now all of these offerings is just talking about the guilt offering, the sin offering, the peace offering, and all of them is pretty much the same. So we're going to skip all the way to chapter 8. I told you I was going to be fast. And chapter 8 is talking about the duties that Moshe has to perform. Now, a lot of this stuff that we read, you know, we have these young men and these young women, they, in the streets right now, they have something called pause, right? A lot of times when you hear something that's suspect, you're like, pause. Or nowadays, they're saying no ditty. No ditty. <laughs> it's yeah, no, it's no the, longer yeah, no it's, ditty. But anyways, I want y'all to understand certain things. 
Because when you read in this, you have to think of it in a holy manner. So when Moshe is washing these brothers and doing all these things, this is a holy ritual. In our minds, you got to get out of the street mentality Don't to think, no you know, you can't think yeah. no diddy because Moshe is washing them and doing this and that and third. This is a holy ritual. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that because we have young men that might hear that now and laugh and snicker. Moses had to wash them? What's this about? But this is what was going on. This had to be, this was a holy ritual. So I want to make sure that's clear so y'all understand that. So y'all don't be snickering and laughing. All right? Look at them. They laughing and snickering already. You know what I'm saying? But you got to say stuff like this so they can understand. Exactly. And you want them to be in tune with the book and, and read it and get an understanding. So let's read some. Chapter 8. Leviticus chapter 8, verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jehovah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Take Aharon and his sons with him, and the garments and the anointing oil, and the bullock of the sin offering, and the two rams, and the basket of unleavened bread, and assemble thou all the congregation at the door of the tender meeting. And everybody's watching this. Because guess what? You got Israelites being Israelites. So if they say, this is the priest, this is the priest, this is the priest, and they doing all this stuff, and they you don't see them get a... Uh, inaugurated basically you're going to make you're going to make excuses like why is he a priest because this is israel this is us if you see somebody get up there you be like why they up there they ain't got nothing to say they dumb they stupid they this they that this is our people so you got to be real so he has to do these things in front of the people so they know who's who who god chose so that there's no mistake and there's no bickering because when you read later on remember the sons of Korak is, and Korak and them is going to come up and say, who made you boss, Moses? That's in the portions later. But that's what happens because you get these people that feel away and they get jealous and they get upset and they want to know who gave you the um, key to the city. Let's read some. And Moshe did as Jehovah commanded him, and the congregation was assembled at the door of the tent of meeting. Right. And Moshe said unto the congregation, this is the thing which Jehovah had commanded to be so done. So even in that, the Mo Moses is telling the people, this is what Yah said to do. Because he don't want nobody to think that he's doing this under his own volition. Because Israelites are known to accuse people of things that they didn't do. Like, who told you you could do that? Mm. Who gave you the key to the city? Who made you boss? Moses. <laughs> you don't think the, the people was like, Trying to, they just was trying to kill Moses. Mm -hmm. So now to see this, they already like, now what's he about to do? He already done took us out of Egypt. We was eating good in Egypt. Let's read some. And Moshe brought Aharon and his sons and washed them with water. Right. And he put upon him the tunic and right. girded him with the girdle and clothed him with the robe and put the ephod upon him and he girded him with skillfully woven bands I gotta see of this. the ephod. Moshe is literally dressing them, putting all the garments, putting on the crown, putting on the mitre, doing all these things. Let's read. And bounded unto him therewith and he placed the, breast, the breastplate upon him. And in the breastplate... He put the Urim and the Tumim. What's the Urim and the Tumim? The lights of perfection. Let's read. And he set the mitre upon his head. And upon the mitre in front did he set the golden plate, the holy crown, as Jehovah commanded Moshe. You know that the, the, the Pope, their gear is based off of this. That's where they get all of their stuff. Those Catholic priests... And the incense burning and the things, all, all of, they get their whole thing from us. They get this from us. Let's read. And Moshe took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that there was. You was ever therein. see them going in, in the church and they doing this and they sprinkling and doing all that stuff? Right here. Let's read. And sanctified them. Mm -hmm. And he sprinkled thereof. Upon the altar seven times and anointed the altar and all its vessels and the mm -hmm. laver and its base to mm -hmm. sanctify them. Right. And he poured up the anointing oil upon Aharon's head and anointed him to sanctify him. And Moshe brought Aharon's sons and clothed them with tunics and girded them with girdles and bound head tires upon them as Jehovah commanded Moshe. And the bullock of the sin offering was brought 
And Aharon and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the bullock of the sin offering. Mm -hmm. And when it was slain, Moshe took the blood and put it upon the horns of the altar, right. round about with his finger, mm -hmm. and purified the altar, and poured out the remaining blood at the base of the altar, and sanctified it to make atonement for it. And he took all the fat that was upon the inwards, and the lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys, and their fat. And Moshe made it smoke upon the altar. But the bullock and its skin, and its flesh and its dung were burnt mm -hmm. with fire without the camp. And as Jehovah commanded Moshe, and the ram of the burnt offering was presented, and Aharon and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram. Mm -hmm. And when it was killed, Moshe dashed the blood against the altar round about. And when the ram was cut into its pieces, Moshe made the head into pieces, and the suet smoke of it. Mm -hmm. And when the inwards and the legs were washed with the water, Moshe made the whole ram smoke upon the altar. Mm -hmm. It was a burnt offering for a sweet savor. It was an offering made by fire unto Jehovah, as Jehovah commanded Moshe. And the other ram was presented, the ram of consecration. Mm -hmm. And Adon and his sons laid their upon his hands upon the head of the ram. And when it was slain, Moshe took of the blood thereof mm -hmm. and put it upon the tip of Adon's right ear. Right. And upon the thumb of his right hand. Mm -hmm. And upon the great toe of his right foot. Mm -hmm. And Adon's sons were brought, and Moshe put of the blood upon the tip of the right ear and upon the thumb of their right hand and upon the great toe of their right foot. And Moshe dashed the blood against the altar round about. Now, a lot of people don't know why they did this. I don't know why they did this. But guess what? It's something that the, the Most High ordered them to do. But what my Abba used to say was that he would put it on the tip of their right ear so that they could always hear the word of God. He put it on the tip of their right thumb so that they could always put forth their hands into doing God's work. And he put the on the tip of their right toe so that they always walk in the path of the almighty God. And I like that reasoning. I'll take it. I like that reasoning. I don't know if it's true, but I always like that and I admire that. So I said, that's what they did. And that's the reasoning, <laughs> according to Cohen Levy. Let's read some more. Verse 25. And he took the fat and the fat tail and all the fat that was upon the inwards and the lobe of the liver and the two kidneys and their fat and the right thigh. You know, even going back to this thing, what I just said about my Abba. You know, if, if we read these, these books and they have these things called commentary at the bottom, and it be from these so-called scholars like Rashi and all these different guys, I don't care about Rashi. I'd rather listen to what my Abba said about it or what some other Israelite leader said about it. So if that's what my Abba said, then that's the commentary that I'm giving and that's what I believe to be true because we listen to so many things from other people when somebody in our own give a good reasoning, we like, no, that's not it. That can't be it. Of course that could be it. We got to love each other. We got to take advice from each other. Stop debunking everything from our own people. Maybe that is the truth. Maybe that is. I don't know. But what I'm saying is we can't let their word be what it is. Like, that's what it is because Rashi and Rambam said it. I don't care about them. If Cohen Levy said it, that's good enough for me. Let's read some more. And out of the basket of unleavened bread, that was before Yehovah, he took one unleavened cake mm -hmm. and one cake of oiled bread and one wafer, and placed them on the fat and upon the right thigh. And he put the whole upon the hands of Aharon and upon the hands of his sons, and waved them for a wave offering before Yehoah. Right. And Moshe took them from off, the, from off their hands and made them smoke on the altar upon the burnt offering. They were a consecration offering for a sweet savor. It was an offering made by fire unto Yehoah. And Moshe took the breast and waved it for a wave offering before Yehoah. It was Moshe's portion of the ram of consecration, as Jehovah commanded Moshe. And Moshe took of the anointing oil and of the blood which was upon the altar and sprinkled it upon, upon Aharon and upon his garments and upon his sons and upon his sons' garments mm -hmm. with him and sanctified Aharon and his garments and his sons and his sons' garments with him. And Moshe said unto Aharon and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the, of the tent of meeting and there eat it. And the bread that is in the basket of consecration as I commanded, saying, Aharon and his son shall eat it, and that which remaineth of the flesh and of the bread shall ye burn with fire. And ye shall not go out from the door of the tender meeting seven days until the days of your consecration be fulfilled. For he shall consecrate you seven days as hath been done this day. So Jehovah hath commanded to do to make atonement for you. And at the door of the tender meeting, Shall ye abide day and night, seven days, 
and keep the charge for Jehovah, that ye die not, for so I am commanded, so, and I had on. Hold on. So this part, this is my final thought. The priest couldn't leave for seven days. They had to stay in and not leave until they, the full consecration, the full seven days were done. Brothers and sisters, sometimes when you're going through things, you have to separate yourself. And I'm not saying that you have to separate yourself for a long period of time, but sometimes you got to separate yourself. But once you separate yourself and you get your stuff together, you have to keep the fire burning as this altar kept burning. Do not let the fire go out of you, brothers and sisters. Keep going. Keep pushing. Don't let anything stop you. The creator needs for us to stick together and fight and push forward. If we fall, then pick each other up. But we can't stop the fight. We have to keep going. They separated themselves for seven days, but then right after that, they got work to do. You think that the priests didn't get days where they had, they felt bad or they felt down? They still had work to do. And it had to be done, and it had to be done correctly. So guess what? You might fall. Your attitude might be down. Your feeling, your spirit, whatever it is, stay in the fight. Keep going. Push forward. Let's finish it out. And Aaron and his sons did all the things which Jehovah commanded by the hand of Moshe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, told out for your attention, told out for your time. The Most High God is great. At this time, brothers and sisters, I'm going to call up my sister for a quick word, a quick testimony.